Welcome to Medico Virally. In the last video, we have discussed regarding outline of the COVID-19. We have provided you regarding the origin of COVID-19, the important dates regarding COVID-19, and also the transmission and the preventive measures. I request everyone, if you have missed the last video, kindly do watch and come back to this video. So in this video, we will be discussing regarding the presentation which was created for the frontline workers by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Why we have created, uh, why we have chosen this PPT is, this provides you more information regarding COVID-19. All the details are included in this. And also, how the frontline workers are supposed to prevent themselves while carrying the COVID-19 patient. Because, what, we will, what are we going to learn in this video is, uh, we have mainly six sessions. The, each session has its uh, separate importance. Because, the role of frontline worker, the immune information to the community, the community surveillance, like contact tracing, how we trace the persons, why we why we should maintain the uh, why we should shouldn't maintain the stigma and discrimination, and what are the supportive public health services, and uh, what is the personal safety of the frontline workers. So let us uh, continue one by one. So what is main COVID-19? It is I think uh, everyone knows it is a coronavirus disease 2019. So it is caused by a coronavirus named as RCOV2, that is Acute Respiratory Syndrome. So it is a group of disorders and group of symptoms. What are the common symptoms of COVID-19? So we have mainly three symptoms, that is fever, cough and difficulty in breathing. So if you are, suppose you are a lab, lab technician or someone who uh, works as a frontline worker and if you are dealing with a positive case and uh, if you are in suspect, so immediately you have to contact the state helpline number or central helpline number. So even the helpline number are being asked in the MCQs, that is mainly 1075 or the number 011-239-78046. So these numbers are very important. Mostly 1075 is enough. So in the session two, we will be discussing the hand hygiene, the respiratory hygiene, and the social distancing and high risk group. Who are who come under high risk groups? And what is the minimum distance required for social distancing? It is about one meter is required. And what is the respiratory hygiene? So when you sneeze or cough, you have to do it in the elbows, not somewhere else in the open air. Uh, you have to at least uh, carry a kerchief with you uh, or a napkin or something because prevention is better than cure. So if you stop spreading the disease, the disease confines to one area so that the government could also tackle the situation. What are the modes of transmission? So in the last video, we have already discussed the outline of the modes of transmission and here you will get in details about the modes of transmission. For example, just follow the um, flowchart. A person sneezes or coughs and he is an infected person. So if this person who is on the screen is infected and if he sneezes or coughs, the droplets, the infected droplets will be present on his hand. The infected droplets will be present on his hand and these infected droplets will be transferred to other person when he gives shake hand. So the virus got transferred. Or if the person has uh, sneezed into his hand directly, not in elbow, and if he sneezes directly into the hand or if he coughs onto the hand, then in the in the, the here, in the below image, suppose these are the chairs of the bus. And if he touches the chairs of the bus, the virus stays on the uh, chair itself. And if some other person comes and touches the same uh, chair, and the virus is again transferred to him. So in the images, it is clearly given in detail. The infected droplets again gets or transferred to other person. So in this way, the virus is transferring from each person. So if we can prevent, if one can uh, take some precautionary measures, the virus gets uh, stops transmission. So what is hand hygiene? What to do? The hand hygiene is a way of cleaning one's hand that substantially reduces potential pathogens or harmful germs on the hand. So hand washing is not only with the sanitizers. You can also wash with a soap and water for at least 40 seconds or use of 70% alcohol based on hand runs. Because whenever you buy any sanitizer or anything, you just uh, make sure alcohol is uh, the base. So what you have to do? Do and do not. These are main important points because what you have to do Wash your hands often with the soap and water for 40 seconds, especially after you have been in a public place or after blowing your nose, coughing or sneezing. Use a hand sanitizer, at least 70% alcohol based. 
If the soap and water are not available, cover all the surfaces of your hands and rub them together until they feel dry. Do not touch your eyes, nose and mouth. This is an important point. Do not touch your eyes, nose and mouth with unwashed hands. Without washing, if you touch, the virus directly transmits into the respiratory tract. So when you touch the surfaces like door knobs, door bells, elevator buttons, handrails and the support handles like in the buses and chair backs and ATM surfaces. So when you enter the pin or when you uh, just uh, go somewhere like uh, when you touch the mobile and the jeep handles or the steering handles. So these are not included for the uninfected person. So if the person is infected and if the virus is present on these surfaces and if you are an uninfected person and if you are going to touch these kind of surfaces in the public places because you don't know whether the virus is present or not because it is an invisible. So before touching these, you have to maintain some prevention measures like you have to wear gloves and you should not touch your hands. Even if you wear the gloves, you are not permitted to touch your face because the virus gets transmitted. So that's why without washing hands, never, never, never touch your eyes, nose and mouth. This is the most important point and I am also highlighting this point. Do not touch your eyes. The respiratory hygiene. What is respiratory hygiene? It is a combination of measures taken to stop the spread of germs through respiratory behaviors like coughing and sneezing. So when you cough or sneeze, do use a handkerchief or a tissue to cover your face while coughing or sneezing. So you have to, after doing this, you can most of the people throw the tissue somewhere. But you have to throw the tissue immediately into a closed dustbin, not an open dustbin. So you have to close, you know, throw in a closed dustbin. Do cover your sneeze into your bent upper arm, that is into your elbow, in case you are not having a tissue or kerchief. Do wash hands immediately after you have covered your sneeze or cough because uh, as we are telling you can sneeze or cough into your elbow it doesn't mean that uh, you can just leave the hand like that whenever in the as soon as possible you please wash your hand wherever water and soap is present available what you have to not do is you do not use the other ways of covering your face like a pallu of sari as this PPT is released by the Ministry of Health and Welfare Government of India so they have uh, uh, intention like uh, most of our Indian cultures like whenever the ladies cough or sneeze they mostly uh, take the follow of the sari or chunni or gumcha in, in uh, males uh, they just uh, keep uh, as a, a covering because that is not good in COVID-19 do not spit in open and uh, wash basin do not spit in that because even if you spit kindly wash your hands with the sanitizer so that even the sanitizer also goes on the wash basin so sanitizing is very important to control or prevent the COVID-19. Hope the respiratory hygiene is clear for you. So kindly tell your colleagues or someone, people who are in your community or who are with you, so when they cough or sneeze, kindly do it in a handkerchief or a tissue and throw back into a closed dustbin or else kindly do it in your elbow and wash as soon as possible. Okay? And ask your mothers or sisters or fathers not to just cover with a gumcha or a pallu of the sari or chunni it's not a good practice and also hand hygiene i hope hand hygiene is also clear for you so it is about for the time duration is important here 40 seconds is the important and 70 percent alcohol based sanitizers must be used and the most important is do not ever touch your eyes nose and mouth with unwashed hands and now we are going to study a case this will be very interesting uh, for our viewers because uh, when you just uh, imagine a case and uh, what is the answer we will expect from you is uh, we expect a good preventive measures which you could transmit or uh, uh, send in your society or spread in your society so that everyone gets awareness regarding this. So let us go into the case study. Smita has gone out to buy vegetables. She has sore throat and is often coughing without covering her face. The important point is without covering her face. You are in the shop when she comes and suddenly she has a fit of cough. Everyone instantly moves away from her and the shopkeeper says angrily, Don't come into my shop if you are coughing. Are hat jao, dur jao. They just tell the angry shopkeeper, says it. So in this situation, what are you expected to do? So we have three kinds of questions. If you were a customer, what would you have done? So if you were Smita and if you went to the 
vegetable market or somewhere you if you went if you uh, go out to buy vegetables and the shopkeeper angrily says do not come into my shop if you are coughing so if you were smita what would you have done and the second question is if you were the shopkeeper what would you have done and the third one as a health worker what would you advise or counsel and uh, you are a health worker and you are present in that situation and what would you advise or counsel to smita and both and the shopkeeper so these are the three questions which we present before you so what is the answer it is good for people to move away and keep a distance yeah when someone is coughing in the society uh, when in the open place when you go to buy vegetables if they are coughing the first step is yeah better move away because and the virus uh, minimum 1 meter social distance is important so it is good for the people to move away and keep a distance however as a fellow customer anyone could give a polite advice to follow the correct respiratory hygiene so why this case is discussed immediately after the respiratory hygiene topic is here the smita has not followed the respiratory hygiene practice so as a polite advice you have to give a polite advice to smita to follow the correct respiratory hygiene it is wrong for the shopkeeper to have shouted at smita because this is a stigmatizing behavior stigmatizing behavior is uh, just uh, keeping people away from you so you should not just uh, see the people that they have done everything wrong so the stigma in the society must be not present there because the stigma is very problematic in dealing with covid 19 situation though everyone is scared being rude and is not helpful it will not just keep people away from reporting a problem if they feel discriminated so never ever discriminate the person just give a political advice uh, polite advice the shopkeeper can also keep his shop infection free by wiping the counters with a disinfectant regularly even the counters and mostly if it, if possible he has to use the online method of payment because nowadays everyone are using so these are the answers as a customer and as a shopkeeper the question 1 and the question 2 have been answered and the question 3 is as a health worker what would you advise or counsel so as a health worker my job will be counsel smita that she must cover her face with a handkerchief when coughing suggest her to get the medication at phc so ask her to come to your phc and uh, you could give some medication and ask her to uh, cover her face with handkerchief counsel the shopkeeper that anyone can have cough anyone can have a cough and it need not be a corona virus infection because every cough is not a corona virus infection however anyone can have the infection and therefore he can help by keeping a box of tissues and hand sanitizer on the counter or keep a washing station for people to wash their hands so it's better for the uh, shopkeeper because if he wants to sell in any way he must be Uh, he must provide you a box of tissues or hand sanitizer or uh, at least uh, the distance must be maintained between the customers so these are the main important points uh, which a shopkeeper must do and counsel the people on respiratory hygiene so this case study gives the detailed information regarding the stigmatizing behavior and also the respiratory hygiene coming to the social distance so what is social distance deliberately increasing the physical space between people to avoid spreading illness so increasing the space between the people staying at least 1 meter away from other people lessens your chances of catching covid 19 so at least stay 1 meter at least the distance between each person even in your homes uh, uh, because 1 uh, meter distance prevents the spread of covid 19 from infected to uninfected persons so in this social distance situations what you can do and what you cannot do are stay at home unless absolutely necessary so Uh, during the lockdown in the first uh, lockdown most of the people uh, without um, awareness they came onto the roads so because uh, there was no necessity for each and every individual but most of the individuals have been uh, outside so this uh, was controlled uh, in a proper manner however and you have to keep a distance of at least 1 meter between yourself and another person do not hold events where people have to gather because no gatherings and no public gatherings are allowed anyway do not go to crowded places like markets shopping mela parties etc do not use public transport even the public transport is uh, now allowed in the present situation but mostly if uh, mostly uh, personal uh, transport is preferable in this situation because 
if you go to the public transport we don't know the uh, infected person we cannot see the virus and where virus is present we don't know because already in the before slides we have discussed that the virus may be present on the surfaces of the chairs and the lifts and etc so when you are uh, when you go and touch them um, you you could get the virus and you could carry the disease and spread to more people so i personally suggest do not use public transport prevention and uh, what is high risk group high risk group uh, or the people who are at a higher risk from severe illness if they get covid 19 so if the person gets covid 19 who are at higher risk the older adults the people who have underlying medical condition for example heart disease diabetes lung disease kidney disease on medication with the cancer like anti cancer drug so if the person have any of the following comorbidity he also comes under high risk group person the older adults and also the comorbid uh, patients and the pregnant women as we do not know the impact of the disease on pregnancy as of yet it is better to take care about the pregnant women and the children even so these are the high risk group people so we have to ask them to stay in the home itself unless necessary in the session 3 we will be discussing about the community surveillance community surveillance is what are the types of contacts and uh, what can be advised and what are the communication details and what kind of details or how can we do surveillance in the community is the point a person with acute respiratory illness such as fever and at least one sign or symptom of respiratory disease that is cough or shortness of breath if a person has acute respiratory illness what it includes is fever and at least one sign of the respiratory disease if you have a fever with cough if you have a fever with shortness of breath then you are a suspect or probable infected person and the second point is a history of travel a history of travel to a residence in a country or area or territory reporting a local transmission of covid-19 disease during the 14 day prior to symptom onset or a person who with any acute respiratory illness and having being in contact with a confirmed covid-19 case in the last 14 days so what is this is the first point is fever with at least one sign or symptom and a history of travel and uh, a person with any acute respiratory illness who have been contact with a confirmed case or a who have been contact with a positive case in the last 14 days a person with severe acute respiratory infection uh, and requiring hospitalization and no other etiology so this is the main criteria to define a person is infected probably infected or a suspect who is a contact so we have to know who is a contact a contact is a person who is involved in any of the following so a person who provides direct care without proper personal protective equipment the mostly frontline workers without wearing ppes and if they go and treat the covid-19 positive patient he is probably a contact and second one a person who is staying in the same close environment of a covid-19 patient like workplaces classroom or house or gatherings or like public gatherings etc so then he is also called as a contact person and third point a person who traveling together in the close proximity with less than 1 meter distance between a positive patient or with a symptomatic person and uh, these three persons are known as contacts they are called as contacts and uh, i think this video this uh, slide gives you the clear information who is a suspect or a probable infected person and who is a contact so the in contacts we have many types of contacts high risk group and low, low risk group and who come under high risk group for example a person who have touched the body fluids of the patient of the positive patient covid-19 positive patient if uh, i go and touch body fluids of a positive patient like a respiratory tract secretion uh, saliva blood vomit urine feces etc and this uh, i will be under high risk group and a person who had direct physical contact with the body of the patient like for example show he shook hands hugged or took care of so then he comes under high risk group if a person who touched or cleaned the linen clothes or dishes of the patient so most of the yellow paragraph which is here this high risk group is mostly for the front line workers flw front line workers and if per, who a person who have touched or cleaned the linen clothes or dishes a person lived in the same house 
with the patient with the positive patient because he don't know the patient was positive later uh, he is been uh, tested as positive and the person anyone in close proximity with less than 1 meter of a confirmed case without any precaution a passenger traveling in close proximity less than 1 meter for more than 6 hours with a symptomatic patient this person for example if you are traveling in a public transport and a symptomatic person of covid 19 is present in your transport and if you have traveled with the same person with less than 1 meter of distance for more than 6 hours then you are you come under high risk group who come under low risk, low risk group a person who shared the same space for example same class for the school or workstation in the same room and uh the, these people come under the low risk group a person who traveled in same environment but not having high risk group because as in the past situation uh, if you are traveling in a public transport and if unless you have a positive or symptomatic person uh, then you come under low risk group itself because if uh, everyone who is traveling along with you in a bus train or flight or any kind of mode of transport if no one has the symptom and if no one is positive tested positive for covid 19 then you come under low risk group that's it community based surveillance the surveillance done by visiting the local residents of the contacts by health personnel so in the last slide you have you know who is the contact which group come under high risk group which group come under low risk group so now we have to do surveillance because no one comes to you and tell we have been contacted with a positive person and uh, we are uh, infected so no one knows whether he is infected or not so the healthcare workers and the government of india took initiative by doing community based surveillance the surveillance was done by visiting the local residents of the contacts so how you know the uh, contact details because all the details uh, were linked for example if you transport in any kind um, if you go in any kind of public transport automatically your details are saved with each and uh, every website for about 15 days so the surveillance will be done by visiting to the local residents of the contact by health personnel telephone may be used in certain circumstances for follow up so they will just gather, come to you and gather uh, all your details and uh, along with that uh, your mobile number will also be taken and uh, they will just uh, follow up for example um, if you have any problem you could call them or if they have any doubts or if they uh, want to do more surveillance uh, regarding your community even they could call you and get the information introduce yourself explain the purpose of surveillance collect data in a prescribed format this point is uh, uh, given in view of, of the frontline workers for example asha workers or any health uh, assistants when these persons uh, go to the contact to residents they have to introduce uh, themselves and they have to explain the purpose of surveillance because if you go and uh, ask they just give the data no one gives you so you have to explain the situation and then ask uh, next contacts of the confirmed cases traced and monitored for at least 28 days they must be monitored for at least 28 days after the last exposure to the case patient for evidence of covid-19 symptoms information about contacts can be obtained from patient or his or her family members persons at patient's uh, workplace or school associates or other with knowledge about the patient whoever know about you because whoever lives with you or whoever lives uh, in your community they can if you uh, could not give the information if you are not in a situation to provide information to the healthcare worker uh, then automatically they could get this kind of information from your surrounding people so this is how surveillance is done so advisory what we advise for the contacts for the contacted people uh, we have two groups in this asymptomatic and symptomatic groups if you are asymptomatic if you have no symptoms but you are a contact but you have traveled with someone uh, infected person or uh, you have been in close uh, without uh, we have been in close distance uh, with the symptomatic patient then you are uh, you come under the contact groups so even if you are in touch with the if you are in close relation with the symptomatic person and if you are if you are asymptomatic if you don't have any kind of symptoms then you come under the asymptomatic group so if you have any symptoms positive if you have any respiratory symptoms uh, then you come under the symptomatic group so what we advise for the asymptomatic patients are they are required to home quarantine for at least 28 days after the last exposure with the case so they have to be in home quarantine and initiate self health monitoring for development of fever and cough because they have to monitor themselves self health monitoring this is called self health monitoring uh, they have to check the temperature on regular basis and uh, they have to uh, know whether they are coughing uh, their cough is normal or not active monitoring daily visits or telephone calls for 28 days this will be done by the healthcare worker 
like ANM or OSHA person or any kind any person who are uh, associated with the health department. Direct and high risk contacts of a confirmed case should be tested once between day 5 and day 14 of uh, coming in his or her contact. So the high risk contacts of a confirmed case, they must be tested between the 5th and 14th day once and after 14 day again they will be tested anyhow. So regarding the tests and uh, other details, you will get in detail information in the coming slides. So what here, what is this point is, between the 5 and 14 day period, once they will be tested. And the assistant, if uh, you come under the symptomatic group, if the symptoms like fever, cough and difficulty in breathing, um, you please use a mask. You just self-isolate and immediately inform the healthcare worker, okay, at least by telephone, so that they will come and they will ask you to go to the quarantine centers and they will give you a good treatment. The case scenario. Sunil is a young man of 30 years. He works in Mumbai as a teacher in a small school and has returned back home for Holi. Sunil has been confirmed with COVID-19 and now his family is worried. So there is a family in Mumbai. Uh, Sunil is a young man and his age is 30 years. He worked in Mumbai as a teacher in a small school. He came back for Holi and uh, his family is now worried because uh, he has been confirmed with COVID-19. Question is, what will you do? Ensure that all members in the family have been given the advice to follow because even the family members must be quarantined if they are in contact with this Sunil who is confirmed with the COVID-19 for a long duration then every person in the family will be quarantined they must be given good advices they have to be uh, many follow-ups will also be done by the healthcare workers organize the families to support when they are on quarantine for getting their daily supplies like groceries or vegetables so hand hygiene respiratory hygiene is important. All the clothes and household materials used by the Sunil have been disinfected every day. All the clothes and uh, any materials which he is touching, everything must be disinfected and sanitized. Talk to the family oftenly, even if only on the mobile and encourage other friends of the family to talk on the phone because this helps the family get uh, more uh, help during the situation. This is to help them manage the feelings of being isolated because most of the families when they are isolated uh, they feel discriminated so this is not the situation the healthcare worker must and should uh, get the details of their relatives too and they will ask and they will call the relatives also to give a moral support and, uh, and provide more support to the family who is infected and who is dealing with uh, Sunil a confirmed case so these advices will be given to the family who we'll discusses about supportive public health services regarding the community households so what is the response and containment? Create a supportive environment. So what we have to do? We have to talk and involve the influencers and fight the discrimination. We have to fight the discrimination. Make a list of local influencers. Influencers. Explain and discuss the situation and protocols to be followed. Because this must be main important. You have to explain and discuss the situation regarding the protocols, orders and notifications each and every person in the community to follow. Plan community support for high risk people because a person who is in high risk, they have to give uh, community support. The community must support these people. Make a list of high risk groups in the village. Identify the people they meet or talk. Share preventive measures with these people and request them to keep communicating these measures to high risk people. So they have to keep communicating the measures to the high risk people. The communication must be transferred to them. Take care of older people or people with comorbidities like hypertension, diabetes, lung or kidney disease, anything. Coordinate with the existing community. So, for example, we have to coordinate with the existing groups like self-health groups, SHCs and youth networks, uh, etc. And uh, they, these volunteers uh, who work for this emergency pandemic situation, they will be distributing the services like food or gro grocery to the, uh, at the door, delivery, door deliveries. For uh, quarantined households, uh, so who, whoever have been quarantined, uh, self-quarantined, uh, these volunteers or self-help groups will provide them the door deliveries and the midday meals, etc., etc. So you have to help develop household emergency contact list. So ensure each household has a current list of emergency contacts for family, friends, neighbors, essential services and contact numbers like food, medicines, medical health. So all the kinds of emergency contact list must be 
present with each and every one so mostly uh, they can be given uh, through the newspapers or the, through, the, through the digital media or through the uh, news channels also so the case study babulal has been renting out his tractor for the last several years and many people know him in the community recently people have stopped talking babul taking a babulal tractor on rent and you come to know that this is because babulal have been having symptoms of cold and flu when you speak with babulal he tells you that when he is walking people cross over on the other side of the street and do not even talk to him or his family members Uh, including his children even on the phone he has decided to go to his city house so he does not have to bear this behavior because uh, babulal have be, has been discriminated by all the people uh, who is uh, coming uh, in front of him because the people who cross over uh, uh, who pass with um, babulal uh, when babulal is coming on the street all the people uh, go to the extreme ends of the street and uh, even his family members uh, deny to call even on the phone Uh, so this behavior uh, he cannot tolerate this kind of behavior and he decided to go to his uh, city house so here as a influencer what is the role of an influencer so first question is is this the right thing to do and the second question what will you do as a local health worker because if you are a local health worker what will you do so who can help influencing the situation you have to check who can help in influencing the local land owners use the key influencers in giving the communication and what is covid-19 and what are the symptoms because babulal does not have the symptoms which are related to covid-19 he has only cold and flu and this is not at all a symptom of covid-19 talk to the dho or mo like medical officers for discussing the symptoms of covid-19 with babulal and if he is a contact then we will advise him the other schedules as we earlier uh, discussed regarding the quarantine uh, self quarantine and other if needed any medicines will be provided so as a healthcare worker i will just create a line between a communication line between a babulal and the medical officer so that they will discuss the symptoms on phone uh, and uh, we can provide some medications and advices to babulal so do not discriminate in the community because uh, covid 19 is not specified to one caste or one community or one society so it can come to any person so when you are infected then you know the pain of that so do not discriminate please eradicate the stigma present in the society by creating more awareness so what are the protocols for example uh, home quarantine so what is a stay safe for probable infected person restricted movement for covid 19 patients or suspects so what this slide tells uh, gives you the information what this slide tells you is uh, the main thing is keep distance stay in a well ventilated specific room away from other people in your home so you stay in one room uh, away from your all other persons who stay with you in your home stay in one room and make sure it is well ventilated and restrict the movement because unless necessary do not go out of your room if available use a separate bathroom avoid visitors in the house because if infected you can spread the infection to others seek health care and notify avoid going to public areas so if you have any problem because if you have any cough or fever or breathing difficulties then immediately call your nearest health facility asha worker or anms immediately and discuss the situation with them they will provide a good advice because they are well trained avoid going to public areas do not go to work school or public areas like market cinema etc anyhow these are all banned now and these are all closed anyhow uh, avoid using public transport the main important point do not ever use public transport unless the covid 19 situation is controlled wear a mask wear a mask correctly when you are around other people and whenever you enter healthcare providers cleaning because you should not transmit to the frontline workers also so we have already discussed uh, and i will just provide you a small information here you have to wash the hands with 70% alcohol based uh, solutions you have to clean and disinfect each and everything Uh, all the surfaces like uh, table tops door knobs bathroom fixtures phones every day Mo- mainly mobiles carry most of the viruses um, so clean uh, all the devices toilets every day wipe all the surfaces that may have blood stool or body fluids etc and etc use bleaching powder and uh, wash la- laundry thoroughly and avoid shaking soiled linen immediately remove and wash clothes or bedding that have blood stool or body fluids so this is all related to the frontline workers uh, and also to the household workers because in the house uh, we have to keep disinfecting every day all the toilets and all the surfaces all the mobiles all the tv and etc uh, if you just uh, clean with a 
70 percent alcohol based disinfectant you would be uh, safe right stay home for family members because if you go out and if you are in uh, uh, close uh, distance with a positive or infected person then you just carry the virus from outside and come in come into your house and just uh, transmit to your own house or own family members so even when you go out if it is a uh, very essential then follow strict measures and uh, wear a mask and if you someone is sneezing stay away from them do not use any public uh, transport and do not touch any surfaces outside the session 5 which is very important is stigma and discrimination so we have to understand what is a stigma so it is common for the individuals to be feeling stressed or worried because they fear mm, most of this is what is a stigma because the person feels very stressed and worried maybe he, uh, he is dying because as he is infected with covid-19 he may be dying uh, avoiding uh, appro- uh, approaching health facilities avoiding approaching health facilities due to fear of becoming infected because um, he, he has the symptoms of uh, fever and cough everything but uh, he just thinks that if he go and uh, speak with a doctor or frontline worker maybe i may get more virus and maybe i may become more ill that's not the care, correct uh, thing to do because if you have any kind of symptoms most of the gone uh, we have been providing toll free numbers you can call on the number and you will be given the tele medical facilities so do not be stressed do not be worried it's a very common situation most of the cases have been recovered successfully so immediately if you have any kind of symptoms feel free to speak with the healthcare workers so avoid stigma fear of uh, losing livelihoods uh, for example fear of being avoided socially uh, for example if you are in a place of quarantine then you feel like isolated so this is all comes under the stigma why there is a stigma because the level of stigma associated with the covid-19 is based on three main factors so what are those the first one is covid-19 is a new disease about which many things are still being discovered when something is unknown people are worried which leads to fear because we don't know and we most of the people fear of uh, they may get covid-19 and the rumors or fake news give wrong information and spread the fear how to recognize the stigma because uh, recognizing stigma is also important uh, for example if you are in a grocery sh- uh, shop there are several people who are wearing masks you see babulal the store owner going red in his face as he tries to suppress a cough like these are the situations uh, for example coming to the fourth situation uh, surali is a young girl of 11 years she and her 8 year old brother are staying with an aunt as their parents have been asked to go for isolation Surali's aunt keep on complaining to you that children are a big burden on family resources. So these are the, like this is all comes under the stigma. The people uh, should support their relatives when they are isolated or quarantined. So what does the stigma do? The stigma makes people hide their problems. So stigma does not have any kind of benefits. There are only disadvantages associated with the stigma. It makes people hide their problems. it keeps people away from accessing health services and seeking help discouraging them and may at times prevent them from adopting healthy behavior so only with disadvantages of the what can the frontline worker do so we will just keep advising all the people uh, because most of the 80% of the cases are mild cases do not worry and we will give support uh, to the persons who have this kind of stigma and also we will create awareness uh, through all the media like uh, electronic media digital media and any anything whatever possible we will just uh, pass on the information we will create awareness we will just uh, make sure uh, no one fears for the coronavirus they have a proper knowledge regarding the coronavirus how it comes how can you prevent what to do if it is infected for with you so how you can you can stop this transmission if you know everything in detail then you need not worry then the stigma is not present in the society we have a situation this is a case from pitli so in this case what the frontline worker can do is suresh was under home quarantine when his wife developed labor pains and had to be taken hospital for a delivery this is a critical situation because suresh is under home quarantine and his wife developed labor pains the asha worker assured suresh that his wife will be taken care of while he should remain isolated within the house because the asha worker can take his wife but not suresh and suresh is asked to restrict to his house the asha called her neighbor seema and requested her to send food for suresh 
because when her, when the Suresh wife is being taken to the hospital, then the food will be sent to him anyway. She reminded Seema to take precautions while giving food. She then called the convener of local mothers group and a member of village health and nutrition committee, and apprised both of them of the situation, requesting them to arrange for Suresh food and home care requirements. And the VHSNC member requested village youth group members to do needful for Suresh at least for next 72 hours till his wife returns. What are the positive actions taken by Asha? She has very uh, cleverly reminded uh, the VHSNC, and she has uh, she is thinking about Suresh because. Um, here regarding the food and home care requirements uh, because when his wife is being taken to the hospital uh, all the essentials will be provided to Suresh anyway. What should be done? She informed her neighbor to give food. Which groups or people were involved by Asha to provide supportive environment, youth groups, neighbors, volunteers, etc. And the session 6 regarding the communication and personal safety. Here we will be discussing about uh, what to communicate and communication platforms. Already we have discussed about the hand hygiene and the respiratory hygiene, social distancing and home care and quarantine like who is a uh, suspect, who is a contact and uh, what are the groups, high risk group, low risk group yeah? and uh, how to monitor, how we monitor the symptoms. We have already discussed all this. So, But how this information is being carried to each and every individual in the India? We will be displaying all these uh, guidelines in the appropriate public places and also use essential services like uh, garbage collection vans, milk supply vans, etc. All the stickers uh, will be pasted on all these kind of essential services because whenever someone sees this, they can automatically get more knowledge and they can at least follow or someone insist them to do that. And we will share WhatsApp messages on the group also. We use pocket book for giving key messages. So always be polite. Uh, even if you are in a public and if someone is not wearing mask and someone is coughing without uh, taking the uh, precautionary measures, then do not shout at them, do not discriminate them and do not use rude language. Always be polite, explain them, let them take their own time uh, and maintain the distance because uh, even if you are polite and everything, without maintaining distance, maybe if the person, opposite person is infected, you could get the virus. So uh, maintaining the distance, explain him so that he explains some other people. So all the details and all the communication details uh, will be collected by all the frontline workers. And the mask management, this is the most important slide of our video. The mask management is to use a mask if and only when you develop fever, cough or difficulty in breathing or when you visit a healthcare facility or when you are caring for an ill person. If you are caring for a positive patient or a suspect patient or a contact patient, then you have to wear a mask. Or when you go other homes for tracing contact, I mean, for example, if you are a frontline worker and you go and you visit each and every home, then uh, you will be tracing the contact. So then you must wear a mask and also you must wear a mask whenever you go to the public places. So you, we have two main points are use a mask correctly and remove and dispose the mask. For example, how to use a mask correctly? Unfold the pleats facing down place over nose, mouth and chin. Fit the nose piece over the nose bridge so that it fixes tightly. Leave no gaps on either side of the mask. Do not pull the mask down or hang from the neck. Avoid touching the mask while in use. Replace masks with a new clean dry mask as soon as they become damp or humid because uh, on approximate 6 to 8 hours the mask becomes uh, damp or humid. So you have to replace with a new a clean and a dry mask. How to remove and how to dispose safely. Do not reuse single-use masks because the single-use mask which we have, for example, the green color one, um, surgical mask we call mostly. So you, they must not be used again and again and they are only single-use masks. Do not touch other surfaces of the mask while removing. To remove the mask, first you untie the string and then string uh, both the strings, the below string and the above string, you just untie them and handle the mask using the upper string other surfaces may be potentially contaminated. So mostly the upper strings which are over the ears, when you untie them, hold the mask with the upper strings. Remove the mask by using appropriate technique. Do not touch the front but remove the lace. You should not touch the mask from the front. You have to touch from the back side of the mask, that is uh, the threads of the mask and hold it. After removal or whenever you inadvertently touch used mask, Clean hands by 70% alcohol based hand rub or a soap and water for 40 seconds. Discard single use mask after each use. So if you have a cloth type of mask, you have to 
wash them with this 70% alcohol based solutions uh, so do not uh, for example single use masks they must be uh, thrown into the closed containers as we already discussed precaution and safety measures for frontline workers so now frontline workers are more at higher risk so they have to take all the precautionary measures immediately when they are moving around the community when they are moving around the community they have maintained a distance of at least 1 meter not only frontline workers even we have to maintain and they use a three layered mask they have to use a three layered mask but uh, we we use a single layered mask because uh, they are more prone so they use a three layered mask avoid touching your face wash your hands avoid touching your direct physical contact immediately after the frontline worker doctors or from or anyone who is associated with the health departments they immediately on reaching home uh, they have to carefully remove and dispose of your face mask by soaking in bleach solution and then throw it in a covered dustbin so this is a, this uh, we have discussed in the mask management they have to wash hands they have to wipe down all the surfaces like purse mobile uh, with four tablespoons of household bleach in four cups of water they have to just uh, clean this uh, take this solution and clean the purse mobile and everything they have to wipe down if you get any symptoms like fever cough or difficulty in breathing report to the nearest government facility or district surveillance officer immediately so myths and fact about this is with the summer coming up the corona virus will be killed this was the statement as a, okay we have huge summers coming we have more heat so the corona virus will be killed the fact is covid-19 has been detected in all areas including areas with hot and humid weather so even in the hot and humid weather we have the covid-19 has been detected the best way to protect yourself against covid-19 is by frequently washing your hands so this is only false statement so the statement is false it can come in any area like in hot or humid weather also second statement is having a bath with hot water will kill the virus the fact is the virus lives inside the body where temperature is maintained at 37 degrees and is not affected by a hot water bath so even if you um, do a hot water bath the virus won't be killed because it lives inside the body not outside the body so that is false and the second the statement getting the pneumonia vaccine will protect you against the vaccine, uh, virus while vaccines for pneumonia will certainly protect you against other organisms that cause pneumonia the vaccine for novel coronavirus is still under development so even this statement is false and the next one spraying alcohol or disinfectant over your body can prevent infection spraying with all the fact is when you spray alcohol or sanitizer on clothes and body this will not prevent this will not prevent you from getting infection infection spreads when the virus enters the body through the nose or mouth cleaning and wiping with alcohol is to prevent the germ from entering your system through infected hands whenever you touch your mouth or you eat food with infected hands so this can prevent the infection so this statement is right and the last one regularly rinsing the nose with saline will prevent the infection rinsing nose with saline has in few cases helped containing common cold but has no evidence but there is no evidence that uh, it is effective against novel novel coronavirus infection so even this statement is false and here we will come to the next statement coronavirus can be passed through chicken and meat no absolutely no there is no such evidence of coronavirus spreading through meat and poultry however it is always advised to have properly cooked meat we properly cooked the meat and chicken but there is no evidence so this statement is wrong next a person with coronavirus can recover fully and be no more infectious yeah this is true but not 100% 80% of the people have recovered from the disease without a special treatment but this information is still under research eating raw garlic sesame seeds will protect you against the virus garlic is a healthy food that has other benefits but does not prevent you against the coronavirus so this statement is false next the virus can die easily once it is out of the body we do not know about the particular virus as of now because similar viruses sars and mers survive from 8 to 24 hours depending on types of service so in this statement we don't know any information so we think it is a false you can get covid 19 through mosquito bites absolutely no this cannot be spread through the mosquito bite it is spread only through the droplets from infected person sneezes or coughs let's expose the virus the correct information and the behavior is the way to defeat the infection let's play the game to uncover the virus and tackle it through our information
Let's play a recap game. In each square, you will find a statement. Let's hear your answer. Elderly people are more at risk of catching infection. Yes. Asha to wear a mask at all times. Not all times. When they are in uh, contact with uh, other people, uh, with infected people. Spraying alcohol or disinfectant over your body will prevent COVID-19. Yeah, this prevents. State the purpose of your visit when you are on surveillance uh, duty. Yes, absolutely. You have to be polite and you have to state the purpose. If someone is coughing in the public, it is all right to shout and tell the person to go away. Absolutely no. You have to be polite. You have to be polite. Person with uh, diabetes, hypertension is at high risk group. Yes. Clean hands with any sanitizers. No. We have to use at least 70% of alcohol-based sanitizer. When you remove your mask, do not touch the front. Always remove layers from behind. Yes, this is true. Do not touch your face, nose, mouth and eyes. True. Drink warm water to protect from COVID-19. It's not absolutely true, but in some situations it is true. Wash clothes in 0.1% sodium hypo solution. No. Absolutely no. You need not wash. Because this solution is false. You have to wash the clothes. Uh, you can wash clothes in any kind of solutions. Not only with uh, sodium and hypo, but the clothes of the frontline workers must be washed with a specific solution as we already discussed. Use saline sprays to prevent virus from infection. No. Eating garlic and sesame keeps you safe. Mm. Yeah, it prevents. It keeps on safer size. Shortness of breath with high fe fever requires immediate hospitalization. Yeah. Keep a distance of 3 meters from people who are coughing or sneezing. Yes. Mm, at least a 1 meter. Do not spit in the open. Absolutely, yes. In the session 7. How to meet special communication needs in urban areas? So in the urban areas, uh, when you go, when you support, volunteer for uh, supporting the community, help desk set, set up by the local municipality will be done. So you will be given informa information through the local political and religious leaders and you will be given information through the garbage vans, milk vans, etc. We have already discussed and this, most of this thing are the same. So what is the stigma and discrimination? You know what is stigma, what is discrimination we discussed. Remember, urban areas are densely populated with limited health staff. You need to develop community support to keep everyone and yourself safe. Many of the societies have stopped maids and other helpers from entering. While this is correct, as this will keep people at home, the way of managing this distancing is stigmatizing. Words like, they will bring disease to us, the disease will spread because of them. They are, these words are stigmatizing. Work with local influencers and key decision makers of the area to sensitize people. Use the mass media clips to sensitize. Use government orders to show how housing societies should not discriminate against the working class like car cleaners, maids, etc. So, thank you viewers for watching this video. I think most of the information is uh, provided uh, in detail. And uh, you please share this video and share the awareness of uh, COVID-19 to your society and community. And uh, let the stigma and discrimination be eradicated from the community. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Stay home. Stay safe.